Awesome. Well, welcome back to the Slide Podcast, everyone. Today, I am joined with Lila Brickwall Bratch and yep. Coach Jen. Perfect. How are you doing? Doing really well. Yeah, this is a Friday afternoon recording here. This is a rarity for the Slide Podcast. Yeah. So, and it, and it just, sounds like, like a Friday I, afternoon. I feel like I just pulled in on two wheels and I was like, I think I'm going to make it. Here we are. <laughs> Yeah, well, our house is kind of a hangout during the summer. So, like, we've got neighborhood kids here, and they've all been told if they get loud at all, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to like do something really mean. So, anyway, so Jen, anything exciting and new in your world? Um, the the kids are healthy and not injured. We haven't been to the ER or the urgent care in a couple days. You better knock um, on some wood. I know. <laughs> Not gonna wood. Um, yeah, I mean, things are rocking and rolling around here. What about you? Oh, you know, I'm going to save mine till last. Lila, so you just got back from Reno from Nationals. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I just got back uh, Wednesday night. It was really fun. I liked it. Yeah, that's a nice complex. Um, uh-huh. I All saw. Truth, it's so nice. So you, you ranked or you placed tied with Pop Time for catching? Yeah, I, uh. I tied for first. That's what's up. Like, that's a big deal. How excited were you? Sorry, interrupted. Go ahead, Jen. I was going to say, is that something you practice really hard? I know it's very important in the games, but do you work on it? Well, I work on a lot of everything, but I feel like uh, my pop time is my weakest strength, or my weakest part of catching. So it's really a surprise that I got tied for first. I'm really That's, quick with my transfers. My my arm is just like a little less strong than everyone else is there. Yeah. So I got to be extra quick. Yep. Um, you you were um, competing in 13U? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm assuming the, the one you tied first place with was a boy? Mm-hmm. Did you walk over and shake his hand and say, not too bad for a boy afterwards? I don't even know who it was. <laughs> I know how they do those skill competitions. Like you, you're never there at the same time. And yeah, uh, I, I, I think, uh, yeah, I, I, I ran some of those skill competitions a few weeks ago, so I, I know, mm-hmm. but so anyway, you had a good time. Yeah. Jen, you got to see this complex. It's, uh, it's set out in the middle of the desert Yeah. and, uh, everything's turf. Um, it's pretty nice. I was going to ask, uh, Layla about, the turf do you enjoy playing on the turf would you rather it be grass and dirt i like turf a little better when i'm catching because i can slide farther when i'm blocking but uh grass and dirt's fine too well you're, you're gonna have a lot of dirt to play in in cleveland so yeah <laughs> oh well jen asked what's going on with me not a lot but a whole lot of busy um obviously we've sold out banana ball tournament so we're working on like the entertainment portion, the schedule, the itinerary. Um, rosters are going to be released for the individual side next week. Um, so working a lot on that stuff. Um, and honestly, the show is continuing to grow so much. And the field reporters are producing like some amazing content. And um, I mean, we're, we're going to start adding more field reporters soon. Um, we've got a few kind of on special assignment this weekend. We're going to see how they do. Um, and, uh, so yeah, it's going, but you know what? I've read some stuff online lately and, um, it's this time of year, right? It's all-star time. You know, all-star teams are being picked, being played and travel ball fall tryouts are already Mm -hmm. starting. And, um, you know, I, I've, I've seen some posts for parents that, you know, were upset when their kids didn't make a team. And um, I've seen so many different scenarios. And honestly, like, I just want to say, like, if you're listening and you didn't make the team that you were wanting to make, you wouldn't meant to make that team anyway. Like, Amen. like it, it is, it is so much about the Lord's plan and you will be okay. I promise. Use this time. If you didn't make the team and you're not going to play this season, train hard. Train hard, build your confidence, um, and you know what? Go watch the movie Twelve. 
Um, you'll see an amazing story about a kid who tried out for a team, didn't make it when he should have, and then got his uh, revenge um, in the next few seasons. So anyway, for parents out there, I know you're frustrated. Um, you know, you got to remove your emotions from this as, as hard as that is and just think about what's best for your kid. And, um, you know, travel ball is a brutal sport. Um, it's know, not coaches, easy. Yeah. I mean, it, it's definitely not. I've got uh, an athlete that I treat just for like performance. She's a catcher and a uh, softball catcher. Uh-huh. And uh, I've been seeing her for several months, just trying to get stronger and quicker. And she didn't make the team that her mom that she wanted to be on that she played for last year that her parents had gotten close to these other parents and, mm-hmm. and they were devastated. I mean, like couldn't understand it, just like end of the world kind of stuff. And so I spent multiple conversations with the mom and just like trying to talk her off the ledge and, you know, trying to get answers. She was trying to search for answers and, and just like the why, why, why. And then her daughter ended up trying out for a different team, made the other team. And she's like, this is where we were meant to be. I'm like, I know. It always is. I you mean, knew. We knew It this. always is. Yeah. Um, I mean, I what I see too much, Jen, and I haven't been a head coach of a travel team or anything, but I, I'm all for, like, having connections when it comes to the parents and all the parents get along. It's important. But sometimes that doesn't always end, end the way you think it's going to end. That's true. And best friends all of a sudden become enemies. Um, and I feel like parents just have to understand that's how this world works. And if you find the right coach in the right program, you're going to have a coach that's going to have a good conversation with you. If, if your player's not up to, you know, the caliber of the rest of the team. And I think in a lot of situations that I've seen, these coaches aren't willing to even have a conversation. And I think that is the most cowardly way to go about something that impacts a child. Like you owe that kid a conversation and, and hopefully you end it with a positive note that, that pumps that player up to where they're like, yeah, I'm going to be back and I'm going to be better. So. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think you're right. Um, And the parents have to have a certain level of maturity to be able to accept the decision. The coach has to be able to have those conversations with the kid and then the parents have to have a conversation. It's a triangle. So the, and then the parents have to have a conversation with the kid of you're not always going to get what you think you want. 100%. And that's okay. That's yeah. okay. There's so, so many lessons. Um, there's a, there's a book, I think it's called crucial conversations. It's a business book, Yeah. yeah. but is that what it's called? Mm-hmm. Um, that I have not read yet, but it's been re- recommended to me so many times for people that manage teams, like business owners that manage mm-hmm. teams but I could see it for a parent with kids. I could see it for a coach with a team. I mean, it it would probably benefit people. And it's just like, it's having those difficult conversations. It's just just like being an adult, just man up and have a conversation. Yeah. I see CJ Betty was on the show two seasons. No last season. And, um, you know, we had a really good conversation. We've kept in contact since then. And one of the things that he stresses so much, and I completely agree with is when you think you found the right team, go to the head coach and ask them, tell me about your development program, right? And because every coach claims they care about development. Mm -hmm. Even these ones that I see on these baseball mom forums that, you know, oh my God, I can't believe he did this and all this stuff. Every one of those coaches say they believe in development. All right, now define what development means. Like, what does that mean for my player? What does that mean for the team? Like, you, you can't, you can't be all about development and also all about winning. It just, Mm -hmm. you you can't have both. Like development takes time, takes patience, um, from the coaches and the parents. Like, you know, I've heard this, Jen, my, my, my kid has won every game the last two years and now we're on this team and they haven't won anything and parents are upset. Had a Mm -hmm. coach tell me that the other day and I'm like, you know what? Like, I feel like we're having to retrain parents in some cases when it comes to this sport. So, all right. And if your parents, if you, if you need help, you need questions, you want somebody to talk through it with you, call us, email us, message us, let us know. You know, it's almost like the transfer portal these days. Like we're so, we're so quick as coaches, some of us, not all, 
to to get rid of one player to add another that we think is going to add to the team, but mm-hmm. we're not necessarily thinking about the team as a whole. The the team I played for in the summertime growing up, it travel ball is so bizarre to me now because we never had a tryout. We never like it was the same girls every single summer. We grew up together. We played together from twelve u, fourteen u, sixteen u, eighteen u until whoever went to college to play ball played ball in college, and you know, if everybody got along and all the parents got along and I didn't know any different, they were like my best friends and I didn't know any different. I just knew I was having fun. And the ones that were not the caliber or didn't get along or whatever that were on the team, they just weeded themselves out. It didn't have to be anybody asking them to leave. They just, they got it. I don't know. Times are different. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I've heard situations like here's the whole thing. Like you're a travel ball team. You don't have to hold a tryout. Like, no, not, like it's, it's your business. No, you don't I have mean, to. And if you open a tryout, I think you owe it to the individuals playing to go ahead and say who's made the team. Mm-hmm. Like if, if you've already set your mind on eight players and you're looking for three more, yep. be, be upfront and honest about it. Don't yep. even have the players that made the team even show up. Like, yeah. Let if, it be a if true you're looking, tryout. And if you're looking for a shortstop, then have infielders at the trial is my thought. Like Jen, there is you know, no way there's a coach out there looking for a shortstop right okay, now. If you're looking for a first everybody's baseman, kid should be playing shortstop. shortstop. The coach's kid. The coach's kid. Yeah. <laughs> if you're looking for a catcher, then have catchers because that's a very specific position. Yeah. yeah. Or just come to the side podcast. Up. We got we got a whole roster. That's all we have. Pick from. That's yeah. all we have. <laughs> I know. All right, well, we're going to get into our guest today. So joining us today is, uh, I think I'm going to say all these things, like number one wide receiver in the country for his age bracket. Um, A phenomenal baseball player. Um, He's thrown some no-hitters, hit some dingers, you know, just just easy stuff. Um, But joining us today is uh, Trey Najoko. How are you doing, man? I'm doing good. Good. All right. Are you still number one in the country? Yes. I okay. Am. You keeping up with who's number two? Uh, nobody's. I'm just still. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Look, it's number one, and then everybody else. They ain't even a number yeah. two. Like we got to start. Uh-huh. Like that's a good T-shirt idea right there. There's number one, and then everybody else. Like, yeah. All right, dude. So tell us a little bit about where you're from. Um, tell us what age you're playing. Um, and, uh, you know, let's think, what, what do we want to know from him, Lila? Let's give him, uh, let's give him some trivial stuff to tell us about himself. What do you think? Uh, position. Uh, I don't know. Uh, all right. He's gotta be a cowboy fan, but tell us who your NFL team is. All right, name um, where you're from, age group, and tell us your favorite team. Um, I'm from Denton, Texas. My age group is 11U. Uh, and my favorite team is uh, Dallas Cowboys. All right, we could do a whole episode on just that last statement you made right there, but you know what? We'll save it to the end if we have time. <laughs> Jen, don't shake your head. Like, look, we have to address people that need help. And I it's, am trying to help him. And it's him. you. Oh. <laughs> like, he needs help. He's a cowboy fan. Anyway. I am too. <laughs> I am anyway, too. Trey, I get it, man. I get it. Um, all right, man. So, you're loving you. Uh, how long have you been playing baseball? Since I was two. I, I think that's a record for the show. Two? Mm-hmm. Dude, how old were you when you hit your first over-the-fence home run? Seven. In Houston. Hold on, you said seven you? Yes. Wow. Seven you. Yes. All right, now was that like a little small T ball field or something? Uh no, it was coach pitch. And you wow. That's it was uh field. do what now? It was over right field. Oh yeah. I never hit one. Wish I knew what it felt like one of these days. I don't know. Me All right, man. man. Do what? It's me and you, Aaron. We're still stuck. I know Jen hit one. Well, I still got a little bit of hope. 
I mean, <laughs> you're, you're yeah, out of place. That's, right that's now. messed up. That's messed up. I'm gonna have to go jump in bat and practice oh. one day. I hear Jen snorting. I did. I snorted. I that, did. You know what? I ain't gonna have a comeback to that one. She just got. Me. She got. Me. So, all right. Well, uh, so the the name Prince is like that's my favorite name, dude. I think you got the fa- my favorite name of any guest. So you go by Trey. Mm-hmm. All right. I see all of these videos of this like amazing athlete, like just honestly, you, it looks like it comes easy to you, man. Like, tell me what what you put in. Tell me the work that goes into being as good as you are. And let's go baseball first. What what do you do? What's your week look like? Um, every day hitting. Just every, every day. Yes, because a couple of weeks ago I was in a slump. It was. It wasn't that fun. Yeah. Pop ups, grounders, but I didn't really like that. And That's then, your slump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My slump <laughs> is I literally can't hit anything. That's mine too, but, Lila. Yeah, yeah, I've been in a slump for like two and a half years. I, mine's been more than that <laughs> it's one. Rough times, rough times. So you went through a slump. Like, how do you get out of that? Like, when? At what point in time does it? turn into a slump is it one game is it two uh, games couple games for me couple games okay well when I'm in a slump yeah how'd you fix it by hitting every day with my dad we had like a i was dipping a lot with my shoulder and now mm-hmm. i'm level have a little drill every day it's what good. kind of drill helps that because i know there's a lot of players out there that have a um, lot of problems with that Kind of a level drill to stay level and to stay balanced. Mm-hmm. It's like working on my outside pitches to hit and working on my inside pitches to hit. And stuff okay. Like that. Now, does your dad throw to you every day? Uh, yes. Is he a pretty good pitcher? No. No? <laughs> no. Well, no wonder you go through slumps. I mean, come on, let's get you some quality pitch in there. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I hope Dad's not listening to us right now, but it's okay. Um, if he is, if he is listening, he he needs to, you know. Maybe you need to give him some drills. Uh, but uh, so, what position do you play out on the field? Uh, center field, pitching, and third base. Favorite position. Center field. Center field. There's no doubt because. We ain't even talked about speed yet, and I can only imagine you got some wheels. So, yeah. like that, that has to be the perfect position for you. Like, yeah. like yeah. the arm, athletic, you know, running. Now, here's what I want to see you do: you a center fielder, right? All right. So the banana's got a center fielder does backflip catches. Oh, can you do a backflip. No, I can't do a backflip. All right, dude. We, listen, you talking about a <laughs> highlight reel that'll get you recruited in a heartbeat? <laughs> let's do, let's do back some backflip backflips. catch. There you go. I, I think don't so. get him hurt. Don't get him hurt. I ain't. I'm just giving him advice. If he decides to go outside and do a backflip and you know hurt himself, I, I that's on I, him. I will say I'm sorry, but <laughs> look, get on trampoline first. All right. Yeah. So that's cool though, because yeah. you know most of the studs always say shortstop, and so your favorite position is an outfield position. And so here here's a question for you. So there's a lot of parents out there that think their baby can only play the infield, right? You know, we don't want to put anybody in the outfield. You know, like, that's not important. Tell me why you think center field's, like, important enough for it to be your favorite position. Well, I feel like it's my favorite position because I'm a receiver in football, and I know how to track the ball down and everything like that. And uh, I got speed, and got that's what speed. the ball. Yeah. Jen, what you got for this dude? I want to know if you're if you're tracking a ball, <clears throat> and you can either dive head first or feet first. What you gonna do? Head, head first. Yeah, I don't even feel like that's I, a really good question. I feel like that's a <laughs> real. Whoa, 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 whoa! I feel like everyone's trying to dive, get that highlight reel. Yeah, but that's like, it. I mean, yeah, I know, Lila. I'm canceling you right now. You're canceled. <laughs> No, 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 no. Cancel culture. Don't, don't, it, it don't, it don't live on this show. All right, fine. I got another one. Can I, can I go ahead and bring this one out? What's your favorite cereal? Who are you asking? 
Trey. Oh, okay. I thought it was a <laughs> Lila Jen show there for a minute. <laughs> no. Oh. My favorite is Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Yes! Those are good. Those are good. Yeah, I don't get down with that. I'm all about the Fruity Pebbles. Yeah. Like, and, and ideal in the world for me is being tropical. So, like, you know, candles need to have, like, that summer breeze smell. Um, and, and drinks need to have umbrellas in them. You know, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna say something different there about the drinks. Uh, well, umbrellas kind of give it away, but you know. Yeah. Anyway, Trey. All right, so we can get sidebarred all the time on the show, dude. It's okay. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes, if you want to take us off on a tangent, we can do that too. We probably will when we start talking about Dallas Cowboys. But um, <laughs> all right. So, um, how was this past season? Because we're right now probably in between seasons for you. How was this past season for the Aces? I'm still going on this season. Oh, we, really? Uh, we have PGI. Uh, I'm going to PGI July 5th. After no, July. That's in Alabama? Uh, No, it's in South. Memphis. South. Memphis. That's what I thought. It, yeah. It's, yeah. Okay. Because there's another, so Trey, who was on the show, a different Trey, um, Dunford, um, he's out mm-hmm. of Charlotte, North Carolina. He's going to a PGI in Alabama. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Memphis. I remember him saying that. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been to Memphis before? Uh, no, I have not. Oh my gosh! All right. So there is so much to do in Memphis. That's not even related to baseball, dude. And you need to go early or stay later. All right. First of all, the King's house is there. All right. Elvis Presley's house is there. All right. Second of all, you got to spend some time on Bill Street, like. Go go to the jazz bars, go get some barbecue. Um, and then the last thing, <clears throat> you've heard of this guy called Martin Luther King, right? Yes. All right. So the Lorraine Hotel, the hotel that he was staying in when he was assassinated, you has actually been turned into a whole new muse- museum. And it is incredible. So you put on headphones when you walk into the museum and it is timed perfectly and it tells you everything about everything that happened. And I, I went through it and I'm going to tell you, it, it changed my outlook on life um, totally. And um, I think it's great. I want my kids to go through it. And I think it would be something really good for you educational. Cool part about it too is the building where the shooter was at is now turned into a museum as well. So you can go up on the floor and go into the bathroom where the shooter was at and see where Martin Luther King was standing. The hotel is still preserved. His room is preserved. You can go see it. It's all kind of cool, dude. But I went to his uh, house in Atlanta. Oh, yeah? And I was having this, uh, like, this All-American game. Mm -hmm. In uh, Mm -hmm. Atlanta. Winter, it was cold. Yeah. I <laughs> see, he's from Texas. He's talking about it's cold. Yeah, it gets cold out here, dude. <laughs> it does. Lila, don't you start laughing because you don't even know how to spell the word cold. Uh-uh. So I don't Lila's even know in... what a cold is. What even is a cold? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I got the jersey from that time when I went to his house. I don't awesome. know. Awesome. Probably in the right here. I don't know. What was your favorite thing you saw at the house? Uh, I didn't go in the house because they had. Oh, okay. But then we just took a picture on his front, uh, stair, uh, porch. Gotcha. Well, I'm gonna tell you, the man is there. There's so much to that man that really don't ever get recognized. And, um, dude, I'm gonna tell you, go through. The, it's the Civil Rights Museum, and it's attached to the Lorraine Hotel where he was who was assassinated. So anyway, that was a that was a pretty good sidebar. What do you think, Jen? That's okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I hear that. I've never been to Memphis, but uh, yeah, I would love to do. I, you know, yeah, that history, cool. music, all that stuff. Do BB Kings? Like BB like <clears throat> Kings there? Like I'm gonna tell you, ribs, barbecue. If you like that kind of food, mm-hmm. you won't want to come home. Barbecue is different in Memphis, dude. It's different. Oh yeah. All right. So you played there. Um, what? When does your season end that you're currently in? Um, football. Do what now? Football, you said? 
Yeah, football, football. or baseball? Oh, football or uh, baseball, baseball. Uh, July fifth. I don't actually know. <laughs> Honestly, that's a good question because I don't think baseball season ever ends for most. No, people, it just so. for travel ball. It's just like year round. Sometimes we take like a month break. That's basically it, though. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, you, you guys are allowed to be kids. You do know that, right? Yes. All right. Don't mm-hmm. forget that. All right, because it can get buried away with being so busy. But you're a kid. There's t- there's time for all that other stuff but when you get older. It doesn't let me do all that stuff. Who doesn't? My dad, because sometimes oh, you'll, we need, you, we need, sometimes it will be part of the three fourths of the time he'll let me go out and do stuff. But then the other times it's just work every day. Yeah. Look, look, let me know if we need call child services. We need to let you be a no. kid now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, I get it, man. I mean, look, you're ranked number one in the country as a wide receiver, and that's not just luck. That's on purpose. Tell me about that. Like, how do you know you're number one? Uh, we go to this camp. I think it's camp. Mm-hmm. It's like it's called R and R top one. And how I knew is just I yeah, just coming in my. I'm laying in my bed, and um, he told me they have you ranked number one. And I, I didn't know that actually uh, at all. But and then, right before he said that, a year before that, I was. You was what? A running back. On eight U, in seven. Wow. Now, what do you do when you get told you're number one in the country at something? Like, what do you do? Like, do you throw a party? I mean, I don't no. know. Uh, I kept working. Since. Okay. All right. Well, that that's that's what I like to hear. Because, you know, there's time to celebrate, but then there's time to, like, still put in that work. So. I would celebrate in my room. <laughs> I would, too, dude. I'd be in the shower dancing. I'd be every, everywhere. And I don't, even, I don't even have any good dance moves, but I'd, I'd still be working on something. So, Jen, don't shake your head. You I, do I'm, it, too. You do I'm it. Just tr- I'm just trying not to visualize it. Aaron, are you um, getting the sprinkler? <laughs> <laughs> That's, I feel like, the only dance you would know. Uh no, I I I can hit the Carlton pretty good though. Like, let me see it. Nah, I'm not doing that. I'll knock that stuff off in my. <laughs> no, room. you you can't claim that without showing me. Show me. All right, I'll have to do that another time. Mm-mm, so, mm-mm. Listen, I can sing some prints. I can throw out some Purple Rain or no, nah, I ain't gonna try that one either. <laughs> I ain't gonna try it. But look, go to Memphis, see Elvis's house. Elvis is the king. Um. And uh, have a good time in Memphis, though. That, that That's still a big deal for me. Lila, what questions you got for him? All right, so I know you play football and baseball, um, and you specialize in both. Do you think that's a benefit or a negative? Because I know right now this is the time where they're wanting you to lock in on one sport and just focus on that. So do you think that benefits you or is it a negative? Uh, it benefits me, but uh, not really a negative because I like both sports. I <laughs> like I like I love both sports. I love to play them. I love to, I love the competition. But then, sometimes I'm not gonna. Sometimes I just don't like one sport, and I yeah. And then, and sometimes, and most of the time, it'd be baseball over football. And I love baseball over football. Are you serious? Mm. <laughs> wow. I like, or motor I, football. I, I feel like you said that last time. For everybody listening, this is our second attempt to a good interview with this dude because we had some technical difficulties. But, man, you know what? I I don't – that's kind of shocking to me, Jen, someone that says they like baseball over football. I would have never thought that, especially considering this dude's ranked number one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, There's um, typically more action per square foot of of football over (laughs) baseball. What are you talking about? Look, Lila. Fat checkers. I I realized that Lila doesn't maybe know what a square foot is. That's fine. You're young. (laughs) No, I know what a square foot is. I don't know how you're explaining that as an action. Those two things don't correlate. Because on a football field, everybody has a a place to be before the ball is snapped. Right? They know where they're going. No, I get what you were saying, but you said it's so (laughs) weird. (laughs) 
Look, look, sometimes as adults, we say things just to make us, you know. Seem smarter. Seem smarter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes we we throw out weird words that you probably never heard before. I mean, that happens, Lila. I know you, when he gets angry. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's sitting there beside you and you dishing on him. I like it. I like it. <laughs> all right. So, all right. In your draft class, you're getting drafted at by the MLB. Uh, who's the worst team in the MLB right now, Lila? Or or probably trade. the A's. Probably the A's. Oh Lord! See, I used to play for the A's. All right, so you're getting drafted out of high school by the A's um, as their number one pick, outfielder. They used to have a dude named Ricky Williams that could run. You ever heard of him? Uh, yes. All right, so Ricky Williams has got a record of stolen bases that will probably never be beat <laughs> unless you can do it. So, all right, so you're getting drafted by them. Who's your favorite college? Texas? I don't have one, but it will probably be Texas, yeah. All right, so the Miami Hurricanes, which is my team, they're, they're reaching out to you because they still they, – by the time you're getting up there, they're still trying to bring the swag back. So, I'm going to tell you, <laughs> that's, a, that's, all we, that's all Hurricane fans talk about all the time is we we still trying to bring the swag back. It's a, it's and, a rebuilding year. <laughs> yeah. Every freaking year is rebuilding. But anyway, so what you're going to do, man? You're going to go the baseball route or you're going to go the college route? Uh, the baseball route. Okay. I don't I don't blame you. Um, baseball is set up, I mean, to take care of – well, let me tell you, you got to get through the minors first. Like, you know, some players get trapped in the minors for their entire career. Mm -hmm. um, but you got to, you, you know, once we get past that step, then, I mean, you don't, you don't really have to worry about concussions. I mean, unless you're getting hit by a pitch um, or maybe you collide with someone in the outfield, but you don't have to worry about that issue. And contracts are insane. Mm, what, size yeah. con what size contract you think you're going to sign, Trey? What do you think? About 500 million? No. Higher. Like a little right. bit higher than that. A million. What did you say again? A million. A million. All right. Ooh. Look, I, this dude. If I had a million dollars, I'd start a team with you, dude. I don't have that right now. So <laughs> if I did, I could help you. I don't. I don't have that, but it's all right. Hey, look, NIL's here. Like you, you know, you can start marketing your name and all that fun stuff. So, uh, Lila, you got another question? Uh. So you covered this a little bit earlier, but you said that when you're tracking down the balls in the outfield, do you think that's your most, like your football skill that helps you most in baseball, or is there something else that also helps you? It's football skills that definitely helps me. Yeah. Be, yeah. Because I, think, yeah. I really started football before baseball, yeah, but then baseball. Uh, baseball, like way more than football, uh, then um, I started liking it more. Uh, I really used to be a lefty, but my hands used to be wrong. It just used to be like a righty grip, like this. Are you serious? Yes. yes. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then I just started to be a righty. I don't know where. Well, we just need to go back and teach your dad, like how how you're supposed to hold the bat, because it sounds like he had you reversed from the <laughs> beginning. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Dad. I'm just kidding. Um. Well, that that you know what? That's a very common mistake, though. I see that a lot. Um, because kids are so busy just processing so many things, they grab the bat the wrong way, especially at a year early age. But um, now, the key is that give your dad a bat and see if he holds it the wrong way. That's what we need to do. And, well, if he stands, if he tries to stand like me, he'll be standing like the not, like the. 80s batters. <laughs> oh, well, he's got the big old bat waggle. Wait up here, a huh? minute. Hey. <laughs> What? Watch out! How? Wait a minute. We just <laughs> up here. This is some news flash stuff here. All right. So tell me about '80s batters because now you're getting into my territory here with late '80s and '90s. So the the batters today hold the bat and stand, and their stance is significantly different. Yeah. Really? Way different. Way more different. The you... '80s, everyone's like way up here. They're like, no, no. they're always. Yeah always down and then when they load they yeah they start down here and then they go 
Well, some you. I don't know what you've been watching, but like there, there was. What about what about Griffey? I've been watching him. Oh, <laughs> but do you think is does he have an '80s stance or is it relevant today? It's revel. It's re- very relevant today. It's okay. like that's different. It's like it's the sweetest swing in baseball, right there. It's like he looks like he looks like Austin Riley, but. Like, mm-hmm. Or Austin Riley looks like him. That's how I was about to say. I'm like, look, yeah. you, you, you talking about the real kid here. So, um, <laughs> but look, I was a Conseco fan. Conseco had the bat, you know, kind of up at his ears a little bit. But, you know, I, if I got in a, in a batter's box right now, I have a little bit of an open swing, uh, open stance. But I still, I mean, I've got the ball. I got my, I got my elbow up, like every parent get, in the world you. says. Get you, get your chicken elbow up. Yeah, get elbow yeah. up. Get that elbow up because that's all that matters. Um. Anyway, so so now you're all righty. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Now, what do you write? You write lefty. Um, I write righty. Okay. Wow. You just My, transformed your body. It was like he be he be writing lefty. He's left-handed with writing, but when he shoots a basketball or throws a ball, he's righty. Hmm. Uh, or like he does something about it's like batting when he's batting he's righty. Really? Yes. M- yeah, my son, he does everything righty. But when it comes to writing, he's lefty. And That's has weird. A, and has amazing handwriting at his age. Like I'm, I'm actually I don't even say for his age, just in general because if we compared his handwriting to mine, you would think he's the adult and I'm the child. So. <laughs> he can be forging your signatures and they wouldn't even know. <laughs> you never know. You never know. Mm-hmm. Uh, my signature looks like a kid anyway, so it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I, I, now, Trey, do you work on your signature sometimes, like for signing autographs when you get older? Uh, I don't know. You got you to gotta start working on that, man. Get that hand, that, that little flip, and, you know, get it all ready. Mm-hmm. Um. So, all right, well, let's talk about football a little bit. Jen, do you have any questions on baseball? Because I, I figure you probably do a little. No? I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about football. Football. All right. This dude's number one in the country for wide receiver. Now, tell me what goes into being number one because that's just a number. Tell me, tell me what plays into it that puts you at that level. Uh, putting in work, working on my route, uh, working on my blocking. On corners, maybe um, reading the coverages that the defense has and how many people are really on me except for just disguising. Just. Yeah, because defenses and offenses are getting very complicated now. I mean, mm-hmm. like, it, it's it's pretty crazy. I mean, to be successful in the NFL, you got to be a good blocker, mm-hmm. you know, and, and – you know, in the days where Jerry Rice was, you know, coming up, that wasn't priority for a wide receiver. Um, I mean, and not to say that Jerry wasn't a good blocker, but like, you know, that's that's something really kind of new. Um, mm-hmm. I'm a big Dolphins fan. You won't come you play keep, for the Dolphins. You keep bringing that up. <laughs> I would. But no. He would. I I would, but no. Listen. <gasps> Jerry Jones, Jerry Jones ain't gonna pick up that phone and call you. He's gonna say he's got somebody. He's got another quarterback. He's gonna try to bring in behind Dak. So he's going. He's still trying to find that Troy Aikman. <laughs> I'm just kidding, dude. They need to put uh, Trey Lance in there because it's just that when we make the playoffs, he he doesn't perform. It's just that the regular season he just performs just to get playoffs and lose. <laughs> So now you you've already got a lot of confidence in the Trey Lance already. Yes. Based on what? Yeah, he's he's way better than Dak. Dak needs to retire. Oh my gosh! How have you, how do you know he's better than Dak? Because we Dak haven't is, seen Trey play yet. The Dak the, the Dak is old. Oh my! Is, Dak is old. He probably is. I don't even think he's hit thirty yet. I was going to say, say no, tell that to Tom Brady. Is he? Yeah, he's like 32, 33. Maybe. I don't know. And, I'm going to look it up. 
I feel like that's not that old, though. I feel like it's not that old for, either. I mean, come for on football, now. Football, for I mean, like compared to Aaron. Well, that's messed up. I was dishing it to everybody today. <laughs> she is. Thank goodness. He is 30 on the dot. He's 30. 30. Yeah, yeah, 30. Yeah, me and my dad do not at all like Dak Prescott at all. I, I think you have the same. I think most Dallas Cowboy fans um, probably feel the same way that you do. Um, I, you know what? I did run into uh, when we, we were playing flag football. I talked to one of the referees because I always like to get to know the refs. And uh, one of them told me that he was an Eagles fan, but when they got a good quarterback, they'd win a Super Bowl. And I'm like, what? You don't like Jalen Hurts? And he didn't like him. And, you know, I've heard some things about Hurts, but – I don't know, man. Dak must have got on Jerry Jones' good side because I was surprised at the contract that Jerry Jones gave him. Yes. But like I'm sure you guys were throwing a party for that one, huh? Mm. <laughs> it was like 100, 150 million. That's my, that's a little bit more than what you were wanting for baseball. Yeah. 160 million, maybe? Yeah. Something like that. But see, you know, obviously we, we've talked about this before on the show, though. When you, when you sign a $160 million contract for baseball, that's guaranteed. Mm-hmm. In football, they stagger them contracts and your signing bonus. Well, your signing bonus you'll get that don't play into the salary cap, but it's so weird with numbers. But I mean, football contracts are becoming more and more guaranteed. So I don't know. We'll see. I, honestly, if I could go back, I'd play football too because I feel like I'd be in the NFL right now because I feel like I'd probably been awesome. Lila. Is that me, huh? That's what they all say. Is that me? No, these days it's my tailbone because I sit down in this desk <laughs> so much, so I can hardly walk with it. But all right, so now do you play? Do you spend more of your time playing football in the in the flag football realm, or which one, or the tackle? I get my way, way more than tackle because I'll do a whole season of tackle, and then all season will be. Seven on seven or flag. Which one do you feel like you you learn the most from? Uh, flag and seven on seven. Ah, see, I like that. That he's a skill position, so a skill position greatly does benefit from flag football, um, mm-hmm. because you you get to start learning. I mean, because young ages and tackle football, you're lucky if you got a quarterback that can get it down the you know down the field to you. Um, but for cornerbacks, for wide receivers, even for some tailbacks uh, and quarterbacks, like that's that's where flag football shows up for the skill positions. Um, what, what's your nickname on the football field? You got one? Uh, yes, in football and baseball. What is it? The Nigeria Nightmare. Man, you stole that. You know that's, that's already tough. been taken, right? No. Who is oh, it? Oh, my goodness. Who is it? He was a Chiefs running back. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, my gosh. I'm going to have to look him up, too. Christian. Christian um, McCoy. Uh, yeah, Christian McCoy. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's him. Yeah. He was a beast, too. All right. Well, you can be the second coming. I like the Nigerian nightmare. <laughs> I mean, there ain't nobody today remember him anyway, so it don't matter. <laughs> Except for you two. Yeah, no, no offense if he's listening right now, which I highly doubt he is, but, you know, oh, well. All right, man, so tell me about the offense you like to run in football. Uh, pass, passing an offense. Uh, maybe empty when there's three, three receivers on one side and, like, a one on the other side, but it's a running back on, the, on that side, too. Okay. Like that. Like it. Spread. Um, what's your favorite route to run? Post corner. <laughs> uh, dude, the post to me is like if you got speed and you got a quarterback that can, can place the ball in front of you, man, that post is always there unless you got a safety in the middle of the field that just like sticking yeah. with you. But it, well, it sounds like a football show now. <laughs> I think we need a football show. Lila, what do you think? I don't even watch football, really. Oh, okay. Well, you wouldn't be a fan, but you know, <laughs> Trey and I would be. So <laughs> we can rag on his Cowboys all the time. That's what we could do. You're a Dolphins fan. All right. Well, who do you pull for? The Raiders? 
Cowboys. Nope, nope. They left California. Who do you pull for? Oh, the I'm not a football fan. Okay. I don't have. Right. I don't have an opinion on this. Okay. All right. Well, then, then, then don't, don't, you can't throw stones at my Dolphins then now. I mean, Dolphins are up and coming. Listen. No, because you say that, they say that every single year. No. No, because Dolph, you're lucky Dolphins won against the Cowboys. Cowboys would have won. But what? They kicked a field goal, and your kicker almost lo- uh, almost missed it. But, but he did. See, that, that's the cool thing about football is either he makes it or he don't. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. that ain't almost. We, y'all almost beat us. No, you, you almost was good enough. <laughs> <laughs> now listen how i bet your dad remembers this ask him if he remembers the snow game on oh. uh the leon <laughs> let fumbled the fumbled recovery he's right here listen he, i was does he remember it yes all right so i was a dolphins fan i was watching that game and i was frustrated because it's the whole field's covered in snow yeah. And then, you know, the kick gets blocked. Leon Lett goes to recover it. Then he fumbles it. And then the game got better. And we won. <laughs> but you know what? You know, sometimes luck falls in your lap. But I feel like you're a dude that you don't have to wait on luck because you work hard enough. What's your workout routine for football like? Um, uh, I go to the gym sometimes and run on the treadmill for 30 minutes. And uh, I flip a tire and push-ups, definitely. And sit-ups, uh, uh, lunges, and... Uh, now, are you going to be a big frame receiver? Like, do you think you're going to be a big body receiver like a Terrell Owens? Or are you going to be more of a Devontae Smith, small with speed? I'm type of in the middle of both of them. Okay. All right. I mean, Terrell was a beast, but, you know, he's still trying to work out for teams. I don't know if you saw that before, but, like, I think, yeah. like, he was still trying to run, and he raced Tyreek one day, and Tyreek had to smoke him, but it's okay. Jen, get us back into baseball. What questions? You got any questions? Yeah. How about if you've had a tough game? And that ride home, what's it like? Do you guys talk <laughs> it out or is it pretty quiet and your parents let you just like internalize it? Uh, no, me and my dad talk it out. Okay. Was that, you like that? You like yeah. to talk about it? Okay. And sometimes my mom gets in the occupation, but, um. Hold on, like, you said your mom like, gets into what? Like, she gets in the car out of nowhere but like <laughs> oh, mom starts putting in her input yes oh okay now let's talk about mom coaching because this is this is a fun subject here is mom there with you too yes <laughs> <laughs> well let's talk about her kind of coaching so you just finished the game you went you went one for three with a home run two strikeouts though I mean, mm. you, 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 you fouled, you had some good line drives, fouls. What kind of, what kind of coaching is your mama going to give you? Uh, she doesn't really give me a lot of coaching. Oh, but, she just gives you some lectures. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. uh, when she gives me coaching, it's football. Okay. Like, stuff like that. But, uh, about my, uh, my attitude and, not like fighting or anything on the field. You said fighting on the field. Yeah, because you, I used to fight a lot on the field. You what on the field? You did a lot on what? On? I used to fight a lot on the field. When I you was used young. to fight. Like yeah. what kind of fighting? On the baseball field? No, football field. Football. Oh, okay. I ain't never seen no kids charge the mound in, <laughs> in youth baseball, but. I get it, man. Look, you're out there playing, man. They got their hands on you. It's annoying you. Can't run your routes right. I get it. I get how, you know, wide receivers get frustrated. Talking. Do what now? It wasn't even because of that. It was just because they was talking. Oh, look, you got to be stronger than that, dude. Yeah. Uh, Like, you know, these wide, you know, these, these cornerbacks in college and NFL going to talk about everything. Like yeah. you, you can't even let them get into your head, man. That's right. That's how they're trying to do. They know what they're doing. Yeah. 
Like, listen, if you're going to be the Nigerian nightmare, be quiet, but kill them with your behaviors and your actions. Like, you know, some of these receivers that I see out there and even, even baseball players, uh, NBA players, pro- professional athletes, you know, sometimes their egos get too big. Sometimes, you know, look at, look at some of the, like the hall of fame wide receivers. I mean, we can talk about Jerry Rice, Marvin Harrison, um, honestly, man, like the list goes on and on and on. And none of those guys were like, it's about me. And mm-hmm. I mean, there's some in the hall of fame that probably had that approach a little bit, but like even looking at Heinz Ward from Pittsburgh, I mean, that dude was about the team. You put me where you yeah. need me and I'll go to work. And man, if somebody's talking, just laugh. Like, just let it fuel that inner fire. Don't, if you show them that you're frustrated, they've won. Does your mama tell you that? Yeah, she tells me that all the time. That's it. Look, all right, I'm going I'm to pull, I'm going to retract, you know, mom coaching. And I'm going to say mom's doing the right thing there. So, like, <laughs> I'm telling you, man, your head, that's what they're drafting. Like, that's what they got to live with is what's up here. They can see all these action plays and these highlight reels. But when they really start to talk to you, they're they're checking the what's up here. And uh, speaking yeah. of what's up there, how are your grades? They're good. They're good. Mm. What's your favorite subject? Math. Okay. That's because he's used to adding up the yards and first down markers. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that batting he average. His, he knows his strike to ball ratio. Um, <laughs> like, well, you you said grades are good. All yeah. Right. Define what's good. A. I heard somebody talking in the background. Like you better know these grades. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay, A's. Yeah, A's. All right. B. You, look, because sometimes when people throw out, you know, grades and they say it's good, like I got to understand what their vision of good is. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's B's and C's. You know? If you ask me, passing when I was in school, but you know, I mean, Jen. Don't do that. Um, but, you know, I mean, you know, everybody is different. Well, good. A's. Mm-hmm. That way you'll never have to worry about any issues getting into a school that you want to go to. You'll never have to worry about any of those problems that you won't have to go the JUCO route. I mean, even though it works, you get to skip that. So keep up, keep up with them grades. And math. I mean, I guess, that's, look, I wish math was my favorite. Lila, what's your favorite subject? I like math, too. Why? Like, I oh my know. god! I feel like you start, so when you start I mixing don't... the alphabet into math, <laughs> you have lost me. Sesame Street never talked about those two meeting the alphabet and the numerical numbers. Like, never heard that from Sesame Street. All right. Well, I like math because I know there's a certain answer, and I don't have to like put in my own words. It's just this is the right answer, and no one okay. can say that it's not the right answer. It's it, factual. Yes. Okay. Yes, I was going to say. All right. All right. Um, well, man, dude, look, I think you're, you're a pretty awesome kid, dude. But that's hey. pretty normal. We have awesome kids on Slide Podcast, so you just fit right in with everyone, man. Except you're the first number one wide receiver we've had. So <laughs> um, when do you think you'll start playing varsity football? Probably junior year. Shoot. If you as good as you are, man, they're gonna have you up as a soft. They're gonna have, they ain't even a name for an eighth grader, but you, they, they might have you up there in the eighth grade if you're still rocking like you are now. Look, when the spotlight, look, football's huge in Texas. Friday Night Lights. Mm-hmm. Wait, have you watched that TV show? Yes. What it, do you think about it? Uh, it's kind of iffy to me. Oh but my gosh! Oh, look, because. I saw some YouTube videos on Friday night, um, Friday uh, night lights, but some of those were better than the movie. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was like two, uh, one hour, two hours. And I used to watch them. Really. Yeah. Yeah. I, I check that out. I love the TV show, mm-hmm. but you ever watch Remember the Titans? No, I don't. All right, yeah. that's my that's one of my favorite movies, dude. All right. You're going to make me feel bad, but you need to go watch it. You ever heard of a guy named Denzel Washington? Uh, yeah. All right. 
Lila, you shook your head. You've heard yeah. of him. Have you yeah. seen this movie? Mm-mm. <sighs> homework. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Actually, I think I have. You just trying to get out of homework. Listen, no, I'm gonna no, tell no, you, no, Denzel no. Washington. I, actually, I feel like I have watched it. it. It's an amazing football movie, and it is. It's set back in the seventies, sixties. Yeah, it must have been the sixties. Um, because it's when segregation was lifted and these high schools joined together. And Denzel Washington is one of the best actors out there, period. I don't care what anybody says. Um, and just the pat he he's the one, I'm gonna tell you this, Trey. Watching that movie helped me realize what a coach meant. Watching that movie helped me realize like what being a part of a team meant. I learned so many different things and obviously I watched it when I was probably, I think it came out in like 2000, 2001 before you were born. Um, but it's still good. I promise. Like go, go watch it. Like I'm going to tell you, man, you get cold chills. You're going to cry. You're going to laugh. I mean, it's going to teach you some good life lessons and Denzel is the freaking man. So anyway, what's, what's the football movie that's set at the prison, the jail, the replacements. Oh, What's that one called? no. You talking about the one with uh, Burt Reynolds uh, was in it, uh, the, the first one, and then Adam Sandler redid it? The Longest Yard? No. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. The Rock movie? Long way- no. Mm-mm. What's... Man, come back to us on that one. What's your favorite baseball to- movie? <clears throat> uh, I don't really have one. No? You ever watch The Sandlot? No. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. We have got to call an Kick intervention right now. Episode. All right, we're gonna to have to have an intervention right now. You cannot be successful in baseball unless you have watched The Sandlot. I'm just that's just how it works. What There's is it called? The Sandlot. He didn't even know what it's called. Oh my gosh. <laughs> have your parents All watched right. The Sandlot? Yes, uh, yeah, my mom. Then look, tell her she's grounded because she hadn't let you watch it. So you got to watch it. All right, it, it was made in the 80s. I think it was like, maybe it was the 90s. Maybe it was 90. Amazing I think baseball. It was the 90s. Yeah, amazing baseball movie. Great message. I went to see it for my 15th birthday party what I, at the theater. So yeah, it was How, definitely the 90s. Are you older? I think you're older than me. Are you older 82. than me? 82. 82. Oh, my gosh. I'm older than everybody. A little oh bit. My God. Yeah. Not by a lot. When were you born, Aaron? See, y'all trying to get too personal. No. 70s. 70s, for 77. sure. 77. 77. Trey, don't sit there and laugh like I'm old. Look, also, I'm the Water you. Boy. Water Boy is a really good football movie, too. He, have you seen the Water Boy? Yes. Okay. Look, so that's the, so my son, he just started, he played his first season to tackle football last fall. And Trey, it was like, you know, sometimes it's hard for kids to actually want to like tackle and hit. Did you have a problem like unleashing the power of Trey on somebody when you play tackle? Mm -hmm. You were hesitant at first. So, no, no? a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It, it looked like, based on what I saw, a lot of those kids. It was their first time, and they were hesitant. So I took I I took my home, my son home from school, or no, home from practice, and I made him watch the Water Boy because I'm like, I need to see the Water Boy out there on that field. <laughs> like I just need to see you flying through the air and hitting somebody. <laughs> and then guess what happened? He had an amazing hit like the second to last game of the season. And I think he ended up with a little bit of a concussion, but, oh. but we got it on camera. We got it on camera. I mean, he, oh, he, he had a concussion. He didn't tell me that. Look, sometimes on a need to know basis. I need <laughs> and to I know. Didn't need to know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, we never, we never took him to a doctor, but he had some symptoms. And uh, so we, we put him down and re- made him rest for a while. But anyway, all right, Trey, any final questions from Lila? Jen, come on, get us get us something here. Right. Give us a question. Hold on. 
This is this is kind of like a joking one, but do you think you have better baseball drip or football drip? Mm. Better football drip, I would say. What's football drip? I need to learn. It's the visors and everything. Uh, arm sleeve. This. Right oh, here. the visors. Okay. Yeah, the visors. Uh, uh, what are they call? The back plates, huh? I see. Well, I seen two of one of those. Armbands, sleeves. Mm-hmm. Uh, no. Like, Does the drip help your game? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> At I'm least like, he's honest. Yeah, you know, some kids, some kids, the mentality is if I pl- if I look good, I play good. Sometimes there's parents spend way too much money for their kids to look good and don't mm-hmm. spend any time on the kid playing good. So, yeah. look, as long as you got your head straight and you know what, what what the real drip is, and the real drip is just your hard work you put into it. I'm, I'm redefining drip now. That is that is happening right now on the Slide Podcast, Lila. We are redefining drip. Drip is your hard work, man. Like, to me, that's what you want to show off. That's what you want to be proud of. And that's what you want to talk and talk to others about. Aaron, right. you literally yeah. asked. You didn't even know what drip was until I came on the show. I had to tell you all about it. Don't be like big well, time. No, no, no. You, you're right. But that was also like two years ago, Lila. You got to give me some credit here now. Sure. I, sure. I grew come up a long in the way. drip world. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm around the house talking about Riz. Look, I'm nicknaming myself <laughs> the Rizzler. <laughs> I'm gonna have to talk to Katie. We've been we've been telling him all about these uh, the slang words of these kids. Yeah, yeah. We we've had a couple of lives that we've done on Instagram, and I've been educated. Um, Skibbity do is that the other no, one? It's skibbity and skibbity. I forgot. No, I forgot. Trey, what quit you laughing called, at me. What'd you try to? What'd you call Sigma? It was like it was something with an S, but you said it completely wrong on the live. And then someone had to like correct you. Cause we had no idea what you what were talking about. What did I say? Sigma. Sigfried and Roy. No, no, I can't remember. I don't remember what honestly, it was either, but you give me a few minutes and I'll probably say about. it wrong. All right, Trey, I need to know what does Sigma mean to you? Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> You're not, you got to play around with me a little bit here now. Like, what does other people think it means? Because I've, I've I've heard so many, like, I've heard people say it's okay to say, like, what the Sigma? And then I've heard people say Sigma is, like, a noun, which is what you would call someone that's, like, the alpha. Yeah, I, it's, like, both, kind of. It's, like, for me or something just for fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's all it is. I, I, I'm, try, I'm trying to be cool, too. I don't, I don't, it's not cool to me. <laughs> well, it's good. not really that cool. It sounds dumb. Yeah. What, they, when I say it? I really got it from. No, when everyone says it. Like, but especially you. <laughs> they really got it from, like, when they started saying Ohio got some crazy stuff up there. Or something like yeah. That. It started, what? like, everyone started, like, the Ohio thing, and it came like became this whole big thing it is it, it was it was started in 2021 2022 maybe yeah yeah and but ohio if someone says man it's ohio out here that means there's nothing right uh, did i use no. that wrong yes. <laughs> it would mean there it, it would be something crazy or something like that. yeah okay like people well, say like only in ohio like because they think Ohio is like a place where weird things happen. Yeah. That was like an old thing, though. That's why? Just, it's been a while. I don't know. I, do. I don't know, Aaron. I don't know why they're attacking Ohio. Like, everybody needs to be like Trey and just say this is nonsense because <laughs> there ain't nothing crazy happening in Ohio. Yeah. Not a whole lot. Except mm-hmm. our banana ball tournament in August. And then once we leave mm-hmm. town, it just it. goes back to being Ohio again. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sorry if you live in Ohio. What'd you say, Trey? Regular Ohio. Yeah. Well, look, I feel like I've got W Riz, and Jen's probably got like L Riz. I don't even know what that means. Ozzy, Ozzy got his little. Um, he has this like weird little fidget snake thing, and he put it into an L, and he said, "Lila, this L is for you." And I was like, "Oh, is it for Lila?" And he said, "Nope, it's because <laughs> you're an L." 
you take the L. <laughs> Listen, if you put a W in front of something, Jen, this is mm -hmm. this is news flash here too. If you put a W inside of, uh, well, not inside, in front of something, that's a good thing. Yeah, it's like you're winning. Like, yeah, um, yeah. And if you put an L in front of something, you're losing or loser or whatever. Charlie Sheen says winning, so I'm I'm gonna stick with the W. I got a lot to learn. That's a lot to process, right? <laughs> I mean, college education, and all we're our minds are blown out the, the window. <laughs> I know, Riz. We can't say the whole word. Like mm -mm. everything today, we're we're we're, get, we're going way over time. But everything today is about how can we shorten? Like, can we get an abbreviation for it? Can we just get a LOL when it's really laugh out loud and people aren't really laughing? I mean, hey, what's I got? I have a real question. What's yeah. TDLR? TD. Nobody. LR. Okay. TDLR. Did you, did you just make this up? Or TLDR? One of those two. TTYL. No, I know that one. <laughs> Hold on, I'm just gonna. I'm LOL. NP. No. T D Oh, my mom knows it. Well, how do you know that? It's too Your mom long, knew it. Too long didn't read. Like Yeah, like when you when someone sends a really long paragraph or something you just don't want to read the whole thing. Yeah, you give a little summary. I, they actually have the nerve to tell you that this was too long. <laughs> I'm lazy and I didn't read it. I didn't read it. I don't know how okay. she knew that, but I didn't. That's crazy. It's on what? Oh, she said it's on Reddit. Oh, okay. Our education. Look, y'all two have got to save this place. I'm going to tell you. Like, I, the world is up to Lila and Trey to set this world straight. <laughs> yeah, because, it ain't going to be us. Listen, colleges are giving away tuition these days. You can get in. You don't even have to take the SATs. You can get paid crazy. to play. Yeah. In can, college. You can get paid to play in at Trey's level. Mm -hmm. Like hell, he's gonna have endorsements probably coming soon. Um, I mean, there was a kid. I want to say it. No, California, I believe. Like a, a ten-year-old kid um, started get. He signed an NIL deal. Like it was like the the youngest player ever to sign an NIL. Some crazy stuff. But That's crazy. It is. It I is. Only sign an NIL deal until you get to high school. So I'm like, yeah, that's what I thought it was too. Listen. You know what? You got talent, Trey. And that means you're going to have a lot of people trying to talk to you. All right. You and your parents got to stay laser focused on what's most important. And that's what that's your education and what's best for you. Coaches are going to come and go. They're going to tell you everything you want to hear. Don't let money do any of the talking, dude. Like stay true to who you are, because it is obvious to all of us that you're a great person. Stay true to who you are. Money will come. Don't let money make your decisions for you, though, right? Because that's when you'll go down the wrong path. Stay straight. Stay level-headed. Stay confident. Be humble. And, and, dude, your future is wide open. Look, I'm going to tell you, Deion Sanders was probably the most successful at pulling double dual sport. Like the dude wore Falcons jersey one day and then that night put on a Braves jersey. Mm -hmm. You could be that person, man. Dion took it serious. Like, and I'm gonna say I, I think Dion is a is an amazing role model for kids like you. Get his Jackie book Robinson and, too, huh? He oh, was a four sport athlete in high school. One hundred percent. Oh, and college that, too. But look, you you look at these trials and tribulations of what some of these players have been through. You know, Dion mm -hmm. didn't deal with the same things that Jackie Robinson did, mm -hmm. but they both handled adversity. And, you know, whoever it is, you got to be able to go through challenges. Like, there there may be a time, Trey, where you don't make a team you want. That should just be fuel to say, you know what? I'm coming back better than ever, just like we were talking about earlier. And, um, man, I'm going to tell you, for someone your age – like there's going to be a lot of things thrown at you as you get older, and um, don't don't lose sight of what's most important. Okay, and that's the slide podcast. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, all right, 
Here, here, here's the here's the the thing that we have to leave you on um, before we ask our final question and then close out the show. But when you go pro, I need you to remember us, okay? Because I I want to I want to autograph jersey. Is that is that possible? Can I get that? Yes. I'm not going to make you sign anything, but I do have a verbal contract right now, so mm-hmm. we can go we can go to Judge Judy if we need to. We so. got the receipt. <laughs> All right, man. Well, look, thank you for being so freaking awesome. Uh, thank you and your parents for being patient and let us get this done the right way. But we're not going to let you go anywhere until you tell us what your walkout song is. What is This dude, this dude, like, it, he, he don't even get, he don't even get messed up by all the nonsense. Go ahead, Trey. Mm-hmm. It, it, it changes sometimes. Mm-hmm. What, what's been one that you've used? Um, crush him, crush him. This is the currently one. Crush him, crush. Who sings that? Lil Uzi Vert. Lil, Lil Uzi. Lil, Lil Uzi Vert. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Listen, I listened to a guy young last week called Young Gravy. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I now we've got Young. What's his name? Young Uzi Jerk. Lil. Uh, Lil, Lil, Lil Uzi Lil, Lil, Lil. Listen. He's not a new one. He's an old guy. In my world, he ain't even got there yet. So he ain't even <laughs> old or young yet. Like, listen, go back to the nineties if you want if you want to like hear some like true like hip hop rap, even the eighties. I already went to the nineties. I listened to Ice Cube, Easy Yeah. Tupac, everybody. Dude, let's 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 you know what? I don't even care how long we go because it's gonna it, it, it doesn't even matter. But all right, so who's your favorite rapper? Cause I can uh, talk some West Coast gangster rap now, and apparently Lila can too. It it will probably be either Ice Cube or Tupac, and I feel like Ice Cube would be better. All right, who you think's better? You think Biggie or Tupac? Oh, Tupac definitely. I agree, one hundred percent. Biggie yeah. was good. Biggie was good. Tupac had so much passion and a storyteller, like. Uh-huh. Like I, I was, I was, was little, I was little white kid in suburbia, right? And and I listened. My '90s was consumed with Scarface, um, you know, Scarface from Houston, Texas. Hopefully, you know who he is, but you need to listen to Mind Playing Tricks on Me. Um, like, there's so many great rappers that came out of the '90s. That I mean, Pac, Dre, Ant Banks, Too Short. Um, some of these guys go back into the eighties, but like, I love spice one, um, Ant Banks was his producer on some things and too short ice cube, like ice cube. When he went club music, like these last like three albums that he's released, like, I think his last greatest that or good album was like he's, war and peace. I, I saw this one, like, uh, like a short video of him saying he wasn't like, he was a freestyler in high school, before, right before he was like a real rapper. I don't see Q being a, a like. I just can't imagine in my head him being a freestyler. He just doesn't look like that. He is so yeah. Like Not, his, it would be surprising. Yeah. Surprising. Yeah, I mean, like just how he puts together his lyrics is. Uh, now, Grant, have you heard uh, Mount Westmore? Have you heard that album? It's got E-40, Too Short, Snoop, and Ice Cube. Came out last year. It's pretty good. Um, last year? Mm-hmm. Mount I didn't Westmore. heard about it. Mount Westmore, all four of them on the same album. And E-40 is off the chart. Like, he's he's off the chain on this one. But, like, that's that West Coast vibe that I love. Like, I mean, I grew up on the Dove Shack, Warren G. Um, man, that's good music right there. Onyx, you know who Onyx is. You need to listen to Slam. I need to put together a playlist for you or something. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll put together like a 
a slide podcast hip hop playlist, <laughs> but it had to have parent advisory all over it. Because mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> my first real rap experience was two live crew. <laughs> and honestly, I, I wasn't even going to say that on the show, but you know, that's, that's what it was. So I got influences all over the place, man. I grew up listening to Prince, John Cougar, Mellencamp, Elvis, Kiss. Um, man, I love uh, soul music. Um, Queen. I like Queen. I like Queen. Um, my mom's really. a big Queen fan. Mm, one of my teammates loved Michael Jackson. Dude, I used I had I had the Thriller jacket. I had the parachute. Like, <laughs> I had parachute when he pants. Up, when he walks up to like to pitch or something, it'll be all Michael Jackson to sing. Oh snap! Does he do the leg kick? Uh, Does he do like uh, any of that? No, dude. He he's just, oh he, I. He just likes to listen to Michael Jackson music, but the thing is crazy. The thing that's crazy right now, he doesn't have Michael Jackson as his walk up song when he's batting. I could see that. My like Michael Jackson's smooth. That's that fits yeah. a picture. Smooth criminal. I'm about to walk up and take something from you. <laughs> this at bat. So. Yeah. All right, dude. Look, we could we could sit for days and talk. And the next time you come to the East Coast, um, you need to you guys got to let me know because I want to come see you play. Okay, mm-hmm. you do travel football. Yeah, that's see everything's travel these days. So, um, what, I might go to Miami December, early December. Uh, if we make YNC, it's like a big uh, tournament. It's okay, like Miami. Um, we're going to Houston, Alabama, Georgia. Wow. And that's for seven on sevens? Colorado, um. Wow. Colorado and to go see that, the Colorado, the Colorado village with John Sanders and everybody like that. And uh, I think we're going to where else? Well, let's Maybe. stop at Colorado. Look, if you get a chance to meet Dion, like I need you to like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you a business card. I need you to slip it to him because one of my bucket list guests for this show is Dion because that dude spits gospel to everybody, and it doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are. That dude's going to tell you how it is, and I love it. Him and Dion's got that that wisdom, like that voice that you just know they're telling you from experience. So, dude, I'd love to go to a Colorado game. Yeah. But, but dude, you, uh, you're you going to rack up on the airline miles. I mean, that's good stuff. I mean, you know, get a good comfy pillow. You're going to be you're gonna be in the airplane a little bit, so. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Well, I did I I did see Dion but I didn't meet beat him because we was at our coach was in the NFL once uh, uh as a corner and his college was Arizona State and we went there and Arizona uh that Arizona was facing against Colorado Who's your coach? Colorado um Colorado walk out their locker Gotcha. Who's your coach? Uh, Courtney Jackson. Might go look him up. Thought you were going to uh, tell me a dolphin I, player or something. Was, yeah. Why I think do you bring up the dolphins, Aaron? Listen, on, the man. more I say it, the more I say it on the show, I feel like the more people are going to walk away thinking, I need to like the dolphins. And I'm trying to grow mm-hmm. the fan base here. Look, I, I, got, I feel sorry for him, Lila. He's a Dallas Cowboy fan. Man. He has the same frustrations <laughs> every year. Like <laughs> he's about to get mad at me. I dude, look, dude, I'm gonna tell you. Like, you guys have some beast. I mean, you gotta pay some people these days because uh uh Mika Fence Pat not Mika Fence Patrick, but who's the linebacker defensive end you guys have? Oh, uh, we have Michael Parsons. Michael Parsons. I think he's due for a big contract soon. So you no, know, we'll see how Jerry Jones treats that. And I wanna see how Stefan, I mean not Stefan, uh, Trayvon Diggs be playing this uh, this year because I feel like I don't feel like he's gonna have a good season, but it's gonna be like a mid season. Well, it'll be better than any season that he don't play. 
That's for sure. Maybe. You still won't have a cornerback duo like uh, like the Dolphins got. But we might. We might have. Uh, what's his name? That set the record. For what interceptions? Yeah, pick six, pick sixes. Who do you play with? Dallas Cowboys. That's the when we was playing against Commanders. I forgot. Oh, I don't know. I, I think Ed Reed's probably got the record for touchdowns from a defensive back, but I don't yeah. know. That's that's time for another call there, dude. We'll have another call. We'll talk about some NFL stuff. So, all right, dude, we're going to wrap it up, man. Um, thank you again so much. Um, this just felt like a conversation, and um, you're you're very impressive. Don't you think, Jen? I think so. This dude's a, this dude's a rock star. Lila? What's your lasting impression? Do you think he's got some work to go? Uh, always keep working, but I feel like he's pretty high up there right now. I, I agree. I agree. Still got to put in some work, mm-hmm. but yeah, keep your head in the game. So, all right, ma'am. Well, at the end of every show, uh, we let you guys close it out as our guest. And uh, so I'm going to thank everybody for listening. And then at the end of the the recording what i'm gonna say until next time lila you want to do it sure. until next time and trey you're gonna say we'll catch you on the slide okay all right we ready all right nope hold on i gotta thank everybody for listening right now because they oh, they yeah. just took a they just took an hour plus to listen to this episode so we gotta thank them listen thank you i know i know i don't even have to thank you because you just listen to the talent uh of tomorrow's like future star so thank me actually um because you just heard it first here on the slide podcast and jen i don't care what you say that's what just (laughs) happened that that just happened Um, thank me thank yeah thank the show anyway (laughs) check this dude out social media um tell us how we can find you on social media trey uh instagram uh you can find all my socials on there okay and uh will you see all his highlight reels too and this dude can pitch he can hit, and boy, can the dude. What do what you run a forty in right now? Uh, four nine five one. Already, you hitting yeah. the fours already? Yeah, it's like late, late fours, like four nine nine or five one. Hey, be patient. Be patient. You work with a speed and agility coach? Uh, yes. Dude, I'll be watching you on the combine few years setting some records so anyway i get i get off track again because you're such a you're such a great dude but um thank you for everyone listening uh we about started another episode but uh thank you for listening follow us subscribe listen i look i'm looking at you right now I, and i need you to go click on that button right there that says subscribe or the one up here um and uh follow us because we're gonna have we're going to have we're, we're definitely going to have this dude back. He's got to come back as a host on the show cuz I think he's got some he's got some slide game. He ain't got riz, he's got slide game. So, look, I'm that's another phrase. I'm just I'm just spitting them all out there today. <laughs> anyway, Lila, I'm going to turn it over to you and Trey. Until next time, we'll catch you on a slide. Yeah, yeah you yeah. will. We thank you for toughing it out and pushing through. Now, let's go teach the world great sportsmanship, leadership, to go inspire someone through your dedication and excitement for the game. Make sure to smash the like and follow button on all social media at the Slide Podcast Show and the Slide Pod on Twitter. Plus, leave us a review and feedback. Until next time. Until next time, we'll 